Hi, Professor Dam here. I wanted to say hello and give you a tour through our course so you could see what I look like. You're going to be hearing my voice a lot in our videos. This is my at-home workspace, so this is where you can imagine me working when we're talking and learning together. I wanted to point out that I did put a copy of our schedule um, in my workspace. I recommend that you do that too. We have several weekly deadlines and I would hate for you to miss them. So maybe pasting or copy and pasting the the course schedule and taping it someplace strategic would be a good idea. Um, but now let me take you uh, through a tour of our course so I can explain a little bit about all the little pieces that go into learning staff with me. So if you go to the Saddleback College main Canvas page and click on our course, you'll see this, don't fret, it's okay. What it is is that we're gonna be running our course off of a slightly different link. And the reason for this is because um, Saddleback is eventually moving to a new website to hold Canvas. Slightly different. We're at canvas.saddleback.edu and they're going to move it to online.saddleback.edu. So it's going to look very, very similar. It's actually a couple new tools on the new website. So we volunteered as a class to move to this new website and so I just wanted to make sure you get there. So you're going to go ahead and click on this go button and it'll send us to the new course and then when you're there you might as well bookmark it. I'll also be sending our link in the email. Okay, so you found our main page. So I just wanna give you a quick tour of what it has in there so you know where to find everything. And again, I encourage you to dig on your own and make sure you know where everything is. This is our main landing page and I made it so that our course has repeated links all throughout. So if you can't find it here, it should be locatable someplace else. So I like these icons. They kind of can tell us where to go. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you're not finding what you need here, you can also use the module link on the left. I know a lot of students are familiar with modules um, and that way works for them. And so all of the same content is offered in that way. So let me go through the, these primary links here and then we'll go through the modules. So this first page is the syllabus and orientation. And I encourage you to take your time to go through here when you have time. I have all of my policies, how the course is going to run, all the critical information that you might need. So when you're scrolling through this information, make sure you um, click all these tabs across the top just to learn everything you need to know. The one thing I will point out is when I click on syllabus, this is where you can download your syllabus. And I encourage you to do that because um, students often email me in the future saying that they need it for a college, let's say, in Wyoming, and they didn't realize they were going to go to Wyoming. Um, I'm hearing a lot from students that they need this syllabus from the actual semester they took the course, and I respond as quickly as I can, but just in case, it'd be better for you to have saved a copy. Um, I go over what we will cover in the class, and then I kind of do a tour here as well, and then I list my policies. If you want to go out and buy something like a calculator for the class, a, the simpler the calculator, the better. However, I want you to know that um, you know you can use the computer calculators as well. So you don't need a calculator, although I think it's going to be easier if you have a simple calculator. And then do check out all these resources that the college has um, provided for us. There's lots of great free stuff there. So when you get a chance, check that out. So that was the syllabus and orientation. Now I want to show you our course calendar. Now the course calendar is visually um, how I like to see the course laid out. But again, everybody's different, so I want to make sure you understand that it's represented in multiple ways. So this is our course calendar, and you can see that it lays out each week and the topics you'll have to learn and the assignments you have. So let's just talk about it so we can orient. So notice that I say that week starts on Tuesdays. And that's because I really wanted to give everybody the maximum amount of time to prepare for exams. But I was nervous about making exams on Sundays because things are closed on Sundays. And if you needed to have access to a computer, you might have limited access on a Sunday. So I decided to make exams on Mondays, which means we've shifted the learning to be Tuesdays to Monday. So hopefully that makes sense. But the gist of the materials kind of or the concept of a week is the same. So You'll also see that there's some weeks that are, look jam-packed, right? So these have multiple assignments. And that's because we've taken a 16-week semester and smashed it into 10, which means we've lost a third of the time we normally would have to learn all this material. So I've tried to space it out in a very palatable way, um, but it will feel kind of uh, shorter than a normal semester. So we're going to just keep on jamming through. So you'll see 
a typical week. This is the week we're in now where we're just kind of getting a tour of how the class works. If you'd like to take time and practice um, taking exams in the system called Respondus, because we will have proctored exams. So I've provided an opportunity for you to practice how that might look. Um, then this is a more average week, this first week, which starts next week. So the learning material is linkable here. So when you click on that, that's where all the material is that I want you to learn. So my learning, and I'll show you in a minute, it's all videos and um, the textbook. So you can access that here. Then we have two homework assignments due this Friday. Now notice that not every Friday has two, but some of them do, some of them don't. So this week we have two homeworks and you can access them um, by clicking the, this link here, which is the due date. Um, and so that's nice for some of us who like this view. It's also very friendly, mobile friendly. I've made sure that it works on your phones and iPads. So if you want to access those things in those ways, it should work. And then notice that at the end of the week, which is on our Mondays, you have something due every Monday. And this is the discussion board. The discussion boards are at the end of the week because they're really meant to kind of recap what we learned. So those um, discussion boards are dated and here are the money that they're due. Then there are some Mondays where we have an exam. So you see we have one coming up pretty rapidly because again, we've smashed the course. And then we have another exam a couple weeks later, another exam a couple weeks later, and then our last exam. See, doesn't that look pretty short? We are going to get to know each other well in a short amount of time. So this is one way in which you can access the material. Another way in which you can access the material is to use the module link. And before I go back to our main page, I'll just show you our module link. So on the module link, you'll see that I have this um, first module is kind of that tour aspect. So I, I encourage you to go through all of these. And now these are all the links that are on that main page. So you have them accessible in multiple ways. And then this is where you will get the um, learning material for each week. So here we have week one or module one, and we have that learning material. And then here are the assignments listed. So there's, oops, there's actually only two homework. I have an extra one in there, sorry. We have the homeworks and then we have the discussion board. But if I click on this module, um, I have it kind of does every module is designed in this way. On the left, we have the goals. So this means that you can kind of orient yourself about what we're trying to learn in this particular week. Then if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see I provided some documents and I have a lot of videos and I feel like it's easier to watch the videos if you have a PDF um, handy to write on. And so I have a PDF for each of the primary topics that we're learning. So all the videos are outlined in these PDFs. So the help for note taking. And then we're going to use a program called JASP, which you'll hear more about later. But here's a, a practice data set so that you can practice it at home and see if you can get the same answers I do. In the middle here, you'll see where the videos are. Every week I give you an estimate of roughly how many minutes or hours um, the videos are they rough they range from one one and a half to two two and a half hours actually i don't think any of them are two and a half hours i think the cap is two um and so what you'll see is each video is described so you can kind of know what the purpose of it is and then you can play it right here in the browser or you can it's a youtube video so you can play it make it large screen small screen or you can um, play it on another device if you want and then, um, so each of these tell you the times. So you can kind of plan out how you want to go, but there's lots of videos in here for you to learn all of that material. And then at the very bottom are optional videos. So these are things that aren't required, but if you're feeling like you need a little bit more information, you're not quite getting what you need, this would be where to go, right towards the bottom. Now I'm going to scroll right back up to the top. And then this is where all the assignments are listed. <laughs> this one looks crazy because it's the first week and I have a lot for you, but it doesn't normally look like this. Um, but so I, I do want you, if you hadn't um, done an icebreaker the week before class started to, to introduce yourself, it's totally optional. You don't have to. And then this is that practice respondus exam. So I, I'm hoping that you will do it um, before class starts because I really want you to know if this class is going to work for you because I'm not really going to bend on respondus. So if that's a, a deal breaker, it's good to know before the class starts. Um, but however, I'll still accept it once class starts because I know a lot of people are on vacation. They may not even realize that I'm expecting you to come check us out.
but here's the material for this week. And um, you'll notice I have three homework listed, and I'm sorry, I'm going to fix that before you log in, because this week I'm just going to have two. Um, so when you see this, you'll see the homeworks are listed, the reading from the textbook, and then the discussions are listed. So every module, every week, will look like this. We have the goals, anything you might want to print up to write on. If you have a printer, you don't have to. It's just for um, note-taking purposes. Our exams are open note, so organizing your notes might be a good idea. Then there's pretty much the video content, which is the, the bulk of the content for this course, and then the assignments to help keep us going. So when we, if I go back to the module page, I just want to point out that these modules are selectively released on certain dates, and that's to keep students from jumping ahead. And I know that it's summer and you want to jump ahead so that you can get things done. And I've opened them up a few days before the module is actually supposed to kind of get started, so you can get ahead a little bit. Um, but the reason I'm trying to prevent students from jumping ahead is the students who tend to jump ahead um, usually didn't do, didn't commit enough time to the current module we're in, and they didn't do well in that. So I want you to if you feel like you've mastered it and you want to move ahead, work on it some more, or maybe take a mental break and enjoy life a little bit and then join us again. We want to all be on the same page at the same time. So that's kind of the module view, but let me go back to our home page. So again, I wanted to provide a bunch of different ways for you to do it. So another way for you to find the materials is to click on these lessons. So I've outlined the lessons and which modules they are. So that's just going to send you to those main pages that you would find on the modules. Here is where you will find textbook information. So um, it's not a free book. I know students really like the free book, but for a class like this, we needed to have a good solid book. Um, I do put questions on the test that come solely from the book that aren't in my lecture. So if you choose not to read the book, which is fine, that's your choice. I don't judge you, but you just have to recognize that there will be questions you won't be able to answer on the test. Now, if I had a choice between the hard copy and the digital copy, I might choose a hard copy because it is open book. However, my test questions are designed to where if you read it, you should know the answer. Um, I really don't want you flipping through the book during the test. Time is of the essence on those tests. Everybody feels like they need more time. So um, I would think it'd be better to have the book read and consumed before the test so you're not wasting time flipping through. Um, however, you know, it, it isn't the bulk of the exams, so um, uh, it may be worth finding a, a way if you want to read it. If you don't want to read it, it's up to you. just realize this isn't in student view, and maybe I should put it in student view so you can have the same views. All right, this is what you'll see. Okay, so to orient you, I have a lot more options than you do, but here are some links that you can access. Um, but primarily you'll be using the module link. And since I'm pointing this out, this announcement link, I use announcements a lot and I expect that you're reading my announcements. So I'll say something like an extra credit is due in a couple days or, hey, by the way, here a student asked me a question and here's the answer. Um, and then if students ask me again, I might not email you the answer because I just sent it out to everybody. So I do expect the announcement to be read regularly. So I would just check those out every time you come in, just check and see if there's any new announcement. Make sure you didn't miss anything. Okay, so this um, link is for that program that I was telling you about. It's called JASP. It's all the guides you would need on how to access it, make it work for you. Uh, I might clean it up a little bit more between now and when I see you, um, but it has tons and tons of videos and links for how to use JASP. So if you're ever getting stuck on one of these lessons and don't know how to use JASP, those videos are linked within here too, but just kind of a main landing zone with some extra tips as well. Oops, I think I didn't talk about JASP. So um, what JASP is, is we're going to learn how to use a program called JASP for our more complicated statistical analyses. So I'm going to teach you the theory behind the math and ask you to understand that those concepts, but then we'll ask JASP to calculate those things for us. And so um, this location will have a bunch of guides. This might look a little different when you get in there and want to clean it up a bit. But essentially, 
Um, there's lots of tips on how to use Jest to do all the things we want it to. Um, and so you'll have access to all these videos on using this program. If you have the ability to download JASP onto your computer, it works so much easier. Um, but if you don't, if you're having a Chromebook or some kind of system where you can't, it can work through the browser. There's just a couple extra steps that have to happen each time. But for the most part, it's a very simple program to use. And so you will have a collection of videos. Um, they will be in both the modules and organized here for you to to learn how to use the program when the time comes. All right, those homework. Those homework are listed in the course calendar. They're listed in the modules, but they're also listed here. So it's just an opportunity for you to kind of find it in a new way, just whatever works best for you. And then the exams are listed here and also um, the link you might need for working with Respondus. So this is that practice quiz I was telling you about and then I have details for how to use Respondus and what it's all about listed here and just some general tips for how to be successful on the exams. Um, the modules that contain the exams have um, practice questions for the exam. So those are always really helpful. Take a look and look for those. Then we have the discussions linked here. So those are on due on Mondays. And then we have a product claim critique due at the end of the semester. Um, I encourage students not to try it too soon because you don't have enough knowledge yet. So it's not going to make sense for you. But as we move along in the semester, I'll be sending out announcements and kind of reminding you just in the back of your head, we're going to be doing this. And the goal is for you to take stats knowledge and apply it to purchasing behavior. So if you're going to buy a product, uh, what kind of stats would you need to see to believe their claims? So that's going to be towards the end of the semester. Here you'll see your grades. Here you're going to see links to finding extra credit. And then if you need general Canvas help, you can find that there. So this is the general sense of the um, course that I think that will help you. Um, the last thing I just wanted to say about homework is that um, they're one of my favorite things about this online course because it gives me a chance to talk to you. So the way I do homework is on a pass fail basis. I don't really want you stressing out about the points of the homework. I just want you seeing if you're doing okay. So the way I've, um, designed the homework to allow me to do pass fail is this way. See how there's a lot of questions? All of these questions are multiple choice. Well, Canvas wanted to grade them as multiple choice and I didn't want them to. I wanted them to give it as a pass fail. So the way I've um, got around Canvas is I said, okay, the first question is an open ended essay question. Canvas has no idea how to grade an open ended essay question and I made it worth the full points of the homework. Each homework is worth six points. So that means that when you've done your homework and submitted it, I will manually count how many of the questions you got right. And if you got 60% or more of them right, I will give you full credit. If you got 50 something percent or below, uh, you'll get no credit. And I know that sounds intimidating, but it's kind of my way of just, um, these are low points. We have 550 points in the course. So each homework isn't worth that many. And I drop three because I don't want you stressing out about maybe you didn't have a good homework experience one time. So um, these are really a kind of unintimidating way for you to practice. So that means that I needed to have an open-ended question. So this is where you can tell me anything you want me to know. So usually I have students say like, hey, number three confused me, or I'm still not sure about what this means or that means. But I often hear from students like, hey, you know, I just want to let you know I got a new car or um, you know, I'm really feeling like I'm struggling with a semester or I have a lot on my mind. Um, this is uh, a very private way for us to interact every week. So I read these every week and I reply to you. So um, take advantage of that. I will answer your questions. If they're specific about stats, I will answer them. If they're something personal, I might send you an email if I feel like I'm afraid you won't see it in the grade book. But so the homework are a really nice way for us to practice and then also for us to kind of interact on a regular basis. And then in addition to those interactions, we have the interactions on the discussion boards. Um, but overall, I feel like you get a gist from what I've presented to you. Oh, thank you, Candace, for reminding me. Um, with the homework, because it's homework, it's not really a quiz. I'm just using the quiz feature of Canvas. You can actually answer questions. I'm just gonna randomly answer questions. I'm not even looking, I don't know what the answers are. And so see, I've answered a few of them, but not all of them. And now I'm gonna leave the test. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna come back and do it later. 
So I'm going to leave and it says, are you sure? And I say yes. Now, if I go back to the homework, which might be listed over here, you'll say, did you want to resume? It saved my work, which is great. So I don't have to redo those. So you can open and close the homework as much as you want. You can take all week to answer them. Sometimes students go, it looked like I spent five days on homework, but I really didn't. I opened it and then I didn't look at it again until the last day. I actually don't mind if you look at it all week. Um, once you submit it, it's mine to grade. I grade the first submission, not any subsequent submissions. Um, but you can open and close it as many times as you want. And so sometimes I find students doing that as they're trying to work through the process and see um, what they want to do with it. So uh, feel free to ask me any questions about homework, but they're really just a kind of a light attempt for you to practice without any kind of huge point penalty. So you can open and close them. Um, you can uh, change your answers. It'll save your answers. But And then they're due on Fridays by midnight. So you can submit them anytime before and you'll get instant feedback from me. And I have taken the time from all of my questions to give you detailed feedback as to why you might have gotten the wrong answer. So once you've submitted homework, I would encourage you to turn right around and look at the answers to see how well you did. And then also more importantly, what you did wrong and what you can learn from that because these are designed to help you learn for the test, not necessarily just to help give you points. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you online. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, I'm excited to start this semester with you.